<laughs> it's now summer down here in Australia and what that means is that the plants that are normally summer dormant are now dormant and conversely the plants that are winter dormant would now be awake. So an example of a summer dormant plant would be those aeoniums. I'll show you a closer look of them. While examples of win winter dormant plants would be the echeverias. So I'm not sure if you can see them at the edge of the frame, but those echeverias are now actively growing. You could see it from their shape and from the, the growth spurt, the size. So I'll be giving you a better look in a bit. So here's how aeoniums look like now that it's summer. The rosettes are closing up, they're protecting themselves. Same for that bush. So as you can see, these two are now compact. They're pretty much protecting themselves from the heat and this is how they look like when they're dormant. If you look at Echeverias though, this is going to be, you're going to see a different story. They are all wide open. And if you look closely at the center of the rosette, the color is bright green. This signifies active growth. Another thing you would notice during the growing season is that the pups are growing at a faster rate. So now that it's their growing season, it won't be long before they would be pushing out of the parent plant. This curls is already well established, so I do not I would not want to pull it out just to be able to reach the the pups. So I try my best to pull out the pups without without uprooting the main plant. I would not want to subject it to any undue stress. So pulling it out and replanting it would be very stressful in a plant. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to do my best to remove the pups without pulling out the parent plant. So here goes. I need a vantage point. So what I'm going to do is to remove the excess, remove some of the top dressing. This way I can reach underneath better. Now I'm just looking for the stem, the pop stem. Now if only I could twist it. There. So as you can see, the pup already has some roots. This is a good thing. Some of the lower leaves went off, but this is alright. They're a bit rotting anyway. This is due to the lack of airflow, so maybe they had some fungal infection back in winter. Now I'm going to see if I can do the same for the other one. From the looks of things, I have a clear view from here. I could just twist it a bit and here two of them are out now the second pup that I just pulled out also has some roots so it's a good thing I already pulled them out the others would be trickier because they are at the other side I might need to switch positions so I have a better view. So the other pups are from the other side. I wonder if I could do the same from here. I don't have a clear view so I'm just going to do it by touch. And yes, successful. This one has lots of roots as well. And it looks like all of them might be rooted already. I hope this one offers no resistance. So 
So two pups came out at the same time. Both both are rooted, so I could just plant them in pots. Is there any more? I think there's one more here, but I don't know if it's large enough already. Yeah, it's still quite small, so I'm going to leave it in. So we've got five pups out. Not bad. Not bad. And now that I'm done pulling them out, I'm going to shift back the top dressing. Now that I've started, I think I should work on the rest of the pops.
I have heaps of other Echeverias that have pups but I chose not to pull them out yet because they're still quite small. I'll be leaving them on the parent plant because they would be growing faster that way. It is also worth noting that for some plants I, I would prefer seeing them clumped. An example would be this Imbricata. Another example would be the Violet Queen. Of course the Elegance as well. But for the rest of the solitary specimens, I would prefer separating them because I like seeing them on their own. It's a personal preference thing. It might, you might have different tastes, different views from me. But yeah, basically I find that some plants look good clumped while others look good on their own. As for the Echeveras that I've harvested, I'm leaving them here on my shelf. Just letting them dry for a few days before I transfer them in soil. I don't have a proper container for them yet and it, I think it would be a pain potting them up in individually. Maybe I could place them in rectangular planters like these. I'll be leaving them there until they start crowding up and by then I would be potting them up individually. My Echeverias are absolutely loving the summer right now. You can clearly see it by the rate that they are growing right now. We're only a few weeks into summer at the moment, so it's still, it's, it's still quite cold sometimes. But this fluctuation of temperature from slightly cool to really hot is welcome right now because we're still not ready for the summer heat. It's a good thing I already have the shade because at least I have a larger area where I can protect them. So once I move them into pots or planters, I would just be, I would just be leaving them under the shade. One of the reasons why I'm gathering the pups now is because I'm working on the, on the new landscape. If you remember, I was working on an arc in the landscape. I intend to plant some of them there and maybe sell, sell off the rest. But, I'm go but I need to have them grow a bit more. Because right now they're still too young. They might not be able to cope being exposed to the elements right now. Because as you know, since I just plucked the pups, they have been living below their parent plant which means that they don't have enough they haven't experienced enough direct sunlight yet I would need to slowly acclimatize them so they would adjust to their new surroundings for now I'm going to leave them under the eaves but at the edge so they would still get some sunlight when the sun is at an angle which means morning and the afternoon once they grow large enough, and I think that would be sometime in at the end of summer or sometime in autumn, that's when I might be moving them out into the pots, into the landscape. And if I ever decide to sell, I might be posting them on my Facebook, I guess. But unfortunately, this would only be for Australia because I. It's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things to consider when doing international. I'll let you know once I start letting go of some of my plants. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. And please do check out my socials. That's Sariska Page at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I think I'm almost ready. I've got a few ideas that I want to execute. And to do that, I would need to do some staging. So maybe the next episode would be about staging. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.